Hey everybody, Dave here again, and I've got a quick video for you that I think you'll find interesting. In the event that you have ever used this address input map control, you would have found out very quickly that there is absolutely no way to reset this control once you've typed an address in. So for example, if we do one, two, three, I don't know, let's see what is around us. So one, two, three, we'll do copper mine branch. So here is the street name and I'm taking this from the control, right? My control I've named ADIP for address input. And then I'm bringing back the value for this particular control for the street name, the value for the control of the selected latitude and the selected longitude. And you can see all this information is being populated here, but you can't reset this control or can you? Well, actually you can, but you can't until I show you how to do it because it's not well documented at all because it's not part of the Microsoft solution. So let me show you how I did it. So one of the things that you'll notice here off the top is if we come and we put a button in here and again, I've renamed this address input control in case you're wondering where that came from under the input menu, all the way at the bottom, you have this premium, which is why that diamond's there. It's a premium address input control. And the fact that you're watching this video probably means that you already know how to do this, but in case you don't, I'm going to digress very quickly for those of you that are new to this, because you might not even be able to get this thing to work until you do this. So I'm going to jump over here in the backside where my environments are. And in case you didn't see how I got there, I clicked the cog and clicked admin center, right? And so now I got to pick my environment that I'm in. And just to make sure I'm over here in the David Soden environment. So we'll go ahead and click through on David Soden environment. We'll drill down a little bit further by going into settings. And then we're going to spin this thing open and we're going to go to the features and by default, the map and address services is turned on. Okay. But it's limited. So this will be on by default in order to get this field, the input premium to work. And again, you have the premium license. You're going to have to physically toggle this on first, because if you don't, then what's going to happen is that you're going to run into issues. The input control is going to tell you to go to the admin center, turn it on. I'm going to give you a learn more. The one thing that you may not know if you've never been back here before, and I see this happen time and time again, and I got to be honest with you, it happens to me too, because I forget. And so because of this, I want to show you that all of these settings, you know, you think you just toggle it and it changes the state and you're good to go. And you would maybe be inclined to leave the page. Well, guess what? You have to scroll to the bottom of the page because any changes you make need to be physically saved. They are not saved automatically. So do not forget to scroll to the bottom of the page or you're going to want yourself even more frustrated because then you're going to have toggled this on and off or from off to on rather, and it's still not going to work. And then you're going to go back here and you're going to see that it's still off and you're going to be like, why is it off? I turned it on. Well, the reason is you didn't save it. Okay. So that being said, now you've got all of this working. So now let's just take this button and let's try to perform the reset function, right? And so now all we need to do is pass in the control ADIP, which is what I called my control. So I'll go ahead and select it and I'll go ahead and close it. But I got this red error or the control rather is underlined. And if you hover over it long enough, you'll get the error message. It says the function expects a resettable control as its input. So I don't know what happened at Microsoft, but you know, I, I can't find a real world use case for this control to be used where you wouldn't need to, or you wouldn't want to have the need to reset it because in all honesty, it's a great, great control, but the problem is it's half baked, right? It's not done. So this is how this workaround works. So you may be wondering, how did I get that reset control to work? So this is what I did. So if I come over here to my button reset, a couple things, what I do is on select of the button, I'm setting a reset toggle. Okay. And so I have this variable called reset toggle and I'm explicitly setting it to false. Okay. So this reset toggle allows this button, the reset button to be 
shown or not shown because on the visibility control I'm checking if reset toggle and because it's a boolean value nature anyway I don't need to do anything else it's either true or false and I'm either gonna hide the button or show the button so in this case when I click it I want to set it to false which would then set its visibility to false and if that doesn't make sense then um, maybe this will make a little bit more sense when we look into the context of this control so the ADIP or the address input control there's two events for this control. One is on address select and one is on change. So I chose on address select because it's a single event that will fire as opposed to when you're typing and pause off. It could potentially fire multiple times. So I chose address on select. And so the address on select, what I'm doing is I'm setting the reset toggle to true because as soon as I choose an address, then that activity is done and that should fire off the event to show my visible button. So now you know how I'm hiding and showing the button. So then let's see how I'm actually clearing the input. So I found kind of this by accident as I was developing an app like I put in an address and then all of a sudden I went to another screen and then I came back to the other screen and lo and behold I found out that this address input field was blanked out. I'm like hmm what if I created a blank page and on that blank page, what if I stuck a timer? So I'm going to set its visibility to true so you can see this. And so this, the way that this works is I just stick the timer on the screen and I set its auto start property to true or on, which means that as soon as you go to this page, this timer is going to start off automatically. And because I want things to happen very, very quickly, I go to the on start or on timer start property, which is an event, and I'm simply quickly navigating right back to the screen that had the address input, which is this get address. So by the act of switching screens in a split microsecond, I'm able to give the illusion that I'm actually resetting the address. Now I want you to notice that in the cache, I'm referencing the control, right? So the controls object still holds the last address, which is kind of good and cool because you can use this in very creative ways. I could in fact have a map on this screen. So as soon as I clicked address input, it could show that location on the map or I could hit the reset and forward to a different screen and it would, you know, do whatever. But the point is, if you need to come back to the same screen and you want this to be cleared out, you simply just have to quickly navigate to another screen. So I'll do five, six, nine. We'll pick some random address that comes up. And so now this is done. So when I have the Stony Hill, I'll hit the reset. Bam. You see that blue button that you saw the timer this time, right? So you didn't see it the first time because I had it hidden. And so that's the reason why I go ahead and I toggle the visibility on this to off so that when we get back to the address and we run it again, let's just use seven, eight. Let's see what comes up here. Anything? Seven, eight, six. I'm just picking random numbers here. So four, five, six. Okay, let's do this one. There's four, five, six. It took forever. And so four, five, six, I now have this other address here. And now with the um, timer hidden, you can't really tell that you went to another screen and came back. So using this trick, you can set the address input control. And now this control becomes more accessible, more reasonable to use. And Microsoft, if you're listening, please, please, please provide a way to use the reset function against this control. It just, at least in my humble opinion, seems like a huge oversight. And it is such a primary core necessary function. Hopefully you see and agree with what I just outlined as my opinion. And you can add this capability relatively soon. So that's it for this video, everybody. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Have a great day.